Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here on the Magic 2014 Let's Play video. So today's deck is the Swords of the Samurai deck. Um, this isn't looking too bad as an opening hand. I've got a Flying Bushido 1, I've got a Kitsune Blade Master with 3 lands, so I think I'll keep that hand. So the uh, the cool feature of this deck is the Bushido, so if we uh, go on the little information, so a creature with Bushido gets a temporary boost to its power and toughness, whenever it blocks or become blocks, which is, uh, which is pretty useful. So. For example, if I was to block this creature, it wouldn't block as a 1-1, it would block as a 2-2. Two, two. And if uh, if it was to swing in and be blocked, it would instead attack as a 2-2, two, two, which is pretty cool. So, um, it's but you basically your opponent's then got to be wary about what you play. So I've got a, a card I'm probably never going to play this um, this game, which is the uh, Mujuin of Infinite Rage. So it's pretty cool, so it's indestructible, as long as it has a divinity counter on it, so it starts off with a divinity counter on it, and then uh, if you decide to use that divinity counter, you can destroy all lands, so I suppose if he had no creatures down, and you played that one and then wiped out all the lands he'd be pretty crazy um, so what's he going to play? So I'm up against the enchantment deck, ah, that was me this that was me last week, we're up against Rum Captain interesting name, you obviously can't block this card, uh, got another land down, so we can also play Kitsune Blade Master as well play that at the end obviously uh, don't want to get him wiped out for some bizarre reason although I don't think it could I don't think it would do unfortunately this only attacks as a 1-1 but uh, it's not the end of the world but we shall play Kitsune Blade Master and we've also got a Court of Glory so untap all creatures you control Samurai creatures you control again plus one plus one until the end of the turn it's pretty sweet um, it's mostly to give all samurai creatures plus one plus one so that's a human samurai that's a samurai a fox samurai Interesting. So Kitsune Blade Master is some kind of crazy fox. <laughs> we've also got a, a piece of equipment. So we've got a Ronin War Club. So a creature gains plus two plus one. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, attach Ronin War Club to that creature. Pretty useful. So what did he just play? He played a Bequeathal. When the enchanted creature dies, you draw two cards. Interesting. I'm not sure if that card is ever going to die or not, but uh, here we go. So we've got another land in play. Um, well, I don't think we'll ever get, I'm ever going to get on play. So we'll play the Ronin War Club this turn just to start off with. Then we shall swing in with the 1-1 and attack. Keep this one as a blocker as, uh, while, it while it may look like it will die, it's actually got First Strike and Bushido, so, um, which is pretty cool. So it's a perfect blocker to his Kazali Pride Mage. Even if he um, swings in with this one, it becomes a 3-3 three, three, as, it's as it's Exalted 1. This one does have First Strike, which is pretty sweet. So what's he playing then? Yavimara Enchantress gains plus one, plus one for each enchantment on the battlefield. So that will come on as a 3-3. Three, three. Yep, 3-3. Three, three. So it starts off life as a plus one. I think it gets um, two... Well, actually, no, I think it starts life as a plus two. And um, I've still got the perfect blocker to... Uh, so what we're actually going to do is I'm actually going to equip this to that bad boy. So this one now becomes a 3-2. So I can swing in for 3-2 without being blocked, which is pretty sweet. This one's still the perfect blocker for this one, for example, because it's still got first strike and it will block as a 3-3, three, three, which again is pretty awesome. So I'm only really worried about his... Either, I can block either one of them and I won't take any damage, which is pretty cool. Well, I can block one of them and the other one would go through, so I can block, kill one one turn and kill one another, but... Uh, it's not the end of the world. What's he going to do? Another Bequeathal. Oh, great. So, uh, I won't, now I won't be able to kill that one off. So, Primal Rage. Creatures you can try to trample. That's pretty mental. <laughs> so, he's going to swing with that card. And it goes in the 6-6. Six, six. Oh, my sweet Jesus. Uh, but I am actually going to skip blocking this turn. Um, I'm not really sure I want to get rid of my uh, Kitsune Blade Master right away. So, ooh, excellent. So, I get my Indebted Samurai. So, whenever a Samurai creature you control dies, you may put a 1 1 counter on Indebted Samurai, which is pretty cool. Um, we will play the U, like so. And it will get equipped to that one. So, technically, I can actually block that one now, which is pretty cool, provided it doesn't play any more uh, Samurai creatures. So, if we continue, might swing in with both of my, both of my creatures, see what happens. He's going to block with that one. Fair enough. So it goes up to a 3-3. Three, three. Doesn't, doesn't kill it off, unfortunately. Not the end of the world. Maybe I should have saved it as a blocker. Not the end of the world. Still have my instance. So technically, I could untap, and um, which could be quite handy. So, if so, so for some reason, if he decides to swing in with both these creatures, I can play my Court of Glory and then buff, buff this one up as well, which is always really nice. Oh, right. I have to continue. Sorry. <laughs> 
I forgot that because I could play Call to Glory, I would I had to hit continue, which is uh, slightly annoying. So you play in privileged position. Other permanent you can try hex proof. It's not the end of the world. I don't have any removal anyway, so uh So that's gone down as a 6-6. Six, 7-7? Six. Seven, seven? Well shit. Untap all creatures you control, samurai creatures. So that one would block as a 5-5. Five, five. Hmm. I'm not really sure I can afford to take 7-7, seven, seven, so let's um Oh, I have to declare attackers or blockers. Ah, uh, damn. I can't declare you as a blocker because you're tapped. That makes me sad. I'm going to skip blocking for now, I think. Take the hit for seven this turn. Not the end of the world. Let's, let's not attack with this guy this time. So what do we get then? Target creature gains double strike until end of turn. That can be pretty useful. Uh, that's two land. Um, yeah. Is that an instant? Please, that's an instant. Yes, that's an instant. So, if we hit continue, that's going to be really useful for this bad boy. and give this guy double strike. Uh, let's attack with uh, my one flying creature. Do another point of damage. Like that. Then, um, yeah, let's hit continue. So, he thinks he might be able to kill me off this turn. He might be able to. I'm not sure. Lenexia Sanctity. Leilana Sanctity, what does that do? Is it, if Leilana Sanctity is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. Fair enough. So, this goes through to combat now. So, I will block with both of you. So, I can block. Pause. Why? Is, oh, uh, yep. So, I give you double strike as well, just to be on the safe side. Has he paused it? He must have paused it. He has paused it. So see how this goes. What's going on? I'm confused. <laughs> so he sacrifices Quasali Pride Mage to do that. Let's play Court of Glory as well. Give my creatures an extra boost. So these both have first these both have first strike now, which is pretty cool. So they should actually take him out, and I shouldn't get any damage dealt to me. Yes, that worked perfectly. Worked a treat. There we go. So I'm still on seven health. What am I to draw? So Tak Takano, Samurai General. Each of the Samurai creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each point of fatigue it has. You're going down. So I can swing him with all of these this turn and keep him around as a five-five blocker, which is awesome. Let's see what he does. If he decides to block, I will kill that off. Although he will then have a lot of uh, cards in his hand. Goodbye, your blocker. He will get two cards, so we'll go up to five. Not the end of the world. But I will then have... I do have supreme board control right now. I don't know what he's going to play, but uh, we shall see. At least I managed to kill off his damn one that was getting all pumped up by all the enchantments. Hopefully he doesn't have anything anywhere near that good anymore. So what's he got then? Viduran Enchantress. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. And Journey to Nowhere. Let me guess my uh, Tic Takano. Or my flying one. Yep, my uh, my general. Kind of annoying, but never mind. And Pacifism on my Indebted Samurai. Why don't you do the one that can permanently attack? <laughs> Weird. My turn, what did I get? Battle Mad Ronin. Uh, Battle Mad Ronin attacks each turn if able. So hit continue. Um, swinging with both my creatures again, I think. He doesn't have anything down that um, I really have to think about. So I will swing him for three. Excellent. Then also play you as well. So I'm kind of worried about what those four cards are. They're, hope they're probably something good. I'm guessing so. Five cards. Wow. That's a lot of cards. And I have two, two, two of my own cards on the battlefield, which essentially do sweet FA. So then, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you draw a card. Face fetters. Oh, God. So he's face fettering one of my other cards. Man, he's just like all about the card draw right now. So face fetters like totally take, basically just makes that so it can't do anything. My turn. 
I'm still never going to get this one in players. I only have seven lands, but uh, I'm going to swing in with both of these. Is he going to block? Oh, yeah. Did he get the... Um... Yeah, you gained four life from the face fetters. Slightly annoying, but never mind. Let's see what he does. He still can't attack with either of these, which is nice. Hopefully he doesn't have anything else he can attack with. I'd love to be able to play this one, but uh, so what's this then? Sterling Growth. Over enchantments you control have Shroud. Fair enough. So he gets to... <coughs> wow, he's drawing cards like crazy right now. Like, I've hardly drawn any of my deck, and he's drawn... He's only got 32 cards left. Mental! See, personally, I would have maybe, like, face fetted this one, the one that, you know, can't be blocked and is just slowly chipping away at your health. I seriously hope I draw another flying one of my samurais. That would be very, very handy. So, what did he... Oh, he just chucked away uh, a journey to nowhere, I'm guessing. What's going on? It's still his turn. Man, this turned out to be a long game already. I hope I win. We're both on seven health. Is that a Rancor? You're giving it to one of his uh, Hidden Spider when an opponent casts a creature spell with flying. If Hidden Spider is an enchantment, Hidden Spider becomes a 3 5 sp creature spider with reach. Oh, that's kind of upsetting. And a journey to nowhere as well. I think I'm starting to feel as though his enchantments are starting to run away with me. And there goes my flying creature. Great! <laughs> so I haven't really got much left. What's this then? Wall of Blossoms. And he's got a Defender creature as well. Great! <laughs> so uh, unless I get something like supremely powerful that wipes all cards off the battlefield, I'm pretty much screwed. Yeah, hardly I don't think there's anything in this deck like that. Yep, that's... Uh, I think this is pretty much good. So I have to attack. Can't really do much about it. And he's going to defend. The defender's a 3-3. Three, three. Obviously, he doesn't do any damage to my Battle Mad Ronin. So I've got 8. If for some reason um, I managed to get this down, that'd be crazy. But uh, And he's got Celestial Ancient. So whenever you, so whenever you put an enchantment spell, put a 1-1 one, one creep. Oh, great. So, uh, yeah, that, that, I, that to me lost. <laughs> took, took a while, but we got there eventually. I, I tried my best, but his enchantments just went absolutely mental crazy. Yeah, GG, mate. GG. Said anything? No. <laughs> He's not that smug. What's his sense? Shackles. Oh, God. So, uh, he's nice to put shackles on me as well. You know, just to really kick in my crotch. He wants to show that he's won. <laughs> and he's just going to attack him with a flyer, I'm guessing. Yep. There we go. Oh, so he's just going to... Why would you attack with them? You could have ended it this turn. Oh, yeah, because he's got summoning sickness, doesn't it? Uh, unless I get something amazing, top deck, which I don't think I do. No, it's a... It's a, it's a uh, it's tear him off his pants. So, I was actually one one mana short of being able to play my Mojo, Mojo and of Instant Rage. Never mind. Angelic Chorus. Go on, just hurry up and hurry up and attack me. You've got more than enough damage. You don't need to play any more. What did that actually do? You gain life equal to its toughness. That's pretty mental. That's a really good card. And a 13-13, you have a Mara Enchantress. Why don't you just... 20... <laughs> wow, that's incredible. So he just he really just wanted to show off there. There we go. That's the end of the game. I'll see you for uh, game number two in a sec, guys. Okay, guys, so we're here for game number two. What are we starting off with? Got a Battle Mad Ronin, which we can't play. Sword, and fire, uh, Sword of Fire and Ice is awesome, as it gets you protection from red and blue, if you happen to be playing a red and blue deck. Um... We've got a Lightning Helix Order. Got no red land, so I'm tempted to draw a new one, although that is even worse. So let's once more. Um, yeah, I think we'll have to go with this. We'll have to keep hand. See, ah, oh, damn, I should have started off with the Terramorph Expanse. What am I doing? Oh, never mind. I won't be able to play Kitsune Blade Master for at least a couple more turns yet. So we're playing some kind of white land, white deck. It looks like one of the new ones from that design of card. Well, actually, I've got a white land anyway, but I will play the Terramorph Expanse. And we'll just pop that for a white card. A white land, sorry. What am I on about? Uh, white land, firm. Just so we have a couple of each, which is always nice. We'll be able to play Kitsune Blade Master next turn. Nice first strike with Bushido. Looks like an all white deck. Maybe Bounce and Boon. Nope, we're playing the um, Children of Light deck. So we've got Core Spirit Dancer. Lots of auras in this deck. Hopefully, we want to take do some damage to it early on before uh, any of these can get pretty crazy. So let's play another red land. We shall play. 
I think Kitsune Blade Master first, as it's slightly more powerful. We'll play the uh, Devoted Retainer next turn. Again, pretty pretty useful cheap card. Got three or four of them in the deck, I think, which is uh, always good. This one uh, defends as a 3-3 three, three with first strike, which is always awesome. Then we've also got a Brute Force as well. Nice instant card. What have we got then? Messer Enchantress. Whenever... I was, I was reading that. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. Man, what is it with the enchantments? Two two enchantment decks, one after the, one after the other. So play some land. Oh, awesome. So we've got an Ariba Moth Rider and a Devoted Retainer. We've also got a Mojin of Cleansing Fire. So it's not quite as expensive as the last one. So if we continue, we shall swing in with our... Um, what's it called? Kitsune Blade Master. Is he going to block? Uh, mm, target creature gets plus three, plus three until the end of the turn. No, I won't, I won't play that yet. I'll play it when I need to, basically. If, if any of these get pretty terrifying, I will use it to uh, swing in. So we'll play the uh, play the Moth Rider and the Devoted Retainer this turn. As a couple of blockers. So this thing's pretty terrifying. So it gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it. So this thing gets pretty terrifying pretty fast. Um... So these are all samurai cards. Is it, oh no, that must be Bushido, the little kind of samurai symbol. Let's see what he does. Hopefully he doesn't have anything he can put on his core spirit dancer yet, so I can keep swinging. But pacifism, oh great. So so he draws a card. So he draws two cards, putting a pacifism on my most powerful creature. That makes me sad. Very very sad. So he's at six cards. I've only got two. Man, that sucks. More land. So we're only three turns away from getting Mojin of Cleansing Fire. So it enters the battlefield with a Divinity Counter on it. If you cast it from your hand, um, it has Indestructible as long as it has a Divinity Counter on it. So yeah, it's basically very similar to the other one except slightly less powerful. So I'll swing in with both of these. See what he does. Nope, decided not to block, so I hit him for another two. Excellent, there we go. So, I don't think I've got any way of removing enchantments from this deck, so I have to continue, because I've just remembered I've got a Brute Force that I can play, which they might want me to play, but I don't want to play. What's he playing then? Armored Ascension. Uh, Enchanted Greece gets plus one, plus one for each plane you control and has flying. Oh, that's mental. Like, totally mental. This thing's already going to be ridiculous. Yep, 7-9 flying. Yep, that, that, that's probably game over already. See, I told you this thing gets pretty. Me this this thing gets ridiculously powerful very quickly. It gets plus one, plus one for each plane you control, and has flying. And I can't even block it. I can block it with this one. So it will do seven damage to me this turn. Oh, bit of lag there. Ah, what's going on? Horrible lag. Whoa, that was weird. Uh, wow, and it's like ah, deals three damage to target creature or player, and you gain three life. Well, that's not going to be much good. Let's be honest, because. Uh, it's a 7-9. <laughs> so that one would pump up to a 2-2. Two, 5-5. Two, five, five. Oh, that really sucks. Why does it have to be a 7-9? I could kill it off otherwise. Oh, I might have, have to block it next turn and see if I can get anything. So I'll go swing in with my uh, Devoted Retainer. Yeah this, 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 yeah, this deck is really good if you get the right cards. So let's hit continue. I might have to block it this turn. Hopefully I get something decent next turn. Can't play that one yet, I only have five lands. Which isn't quite good enough. So that blocks is a 2-2, two, 5-5, two, 8-8. Five, five, eight, eight. That really... And that's an 8-10. Oh great. Griffin Guide. Oh yeah, that's game over. <laughs> creature gets plus 2, plus 2, and that's flying. And when Enchanted Creature dies, put a 2... That is absolutely crazy. Mental crazy. 12-14... Oh my god. Why me? Why me indeed? And, you know, just for shits and giggles, he puts down a Skyhunter Skirmisher. So if I don't block this, then, you know, I'm dead next turn anyway. So so somehow I might, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, block. It's not going to do anything. All he's going to do is two damage to him. And uh, it's, this isn't Hearthstone, so uh, he doesn't get to keep that. So we got then Stonewall Giant. Search your library for an equipment card and put it onto the battlefield, attach it to a creature you control and shuffle your library. Eh, it's not really helpful, but uh, we may as well play it. I'm dead next turn anyway, so uh, I can't play this because it needs to be tapped. 
Um, let's, why the hell not? Let's attack. Attack. <laughs> it's not going to help, but let's attack. So that's me dead. As you can just attack him with both of these, and that's 13 health, so GG. Hurry up and get on with it, mate. Yeah, I haven't really gotten that much equipment this 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 uh these last two duels. Another armored ascension. Are you kidding me? That is a massive piss take. That card is awesome. That should surely be more than four land. Four mana. What the F <laughs> Why are you even playing cards? You won. God damn it. Oh my god. Why? It doesn't matter. You would why do you even attack with both? You could have just attacked with one. Oh, people. Oh, that's the end of game number two. I'll see you in a sec for game number three, guys. Okay, guys, so we're here for game number three. Uh, this is a pretty good starting hand, so I'm gonna keep it. Got the Terramorphic Expanse for a red land, which is what I want. So Quest for the Gravelord. So whenever a creature dies, you may put a quest counter on Quest for the Gravelord and then remove three quest counters uh, and put a 5-5. Five -five Zombie creature, giant, giant zombie creature on the battlefield. So uh, it's kind of in my interest not to get off his creatures as quickly as possible. Uh, hmm. I would go for the Terramorphic Expanse, but I want, kind of want to get the Devoted Retainer down, and I can do that. I can always put the Terramorphic Expanse for a red land down next turn, and then go for another Devoted Retainer as well, which is pretty cool. And then the turn after that, I'll be able to get my Araba Moth Rider. So, Sign and Blood, so he loses two life, but does get to draw... How many cards is it? Two cards. It's a good price to pay for two cards. Another land down. Oh, no, that was the wrong one. Arse. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Although, we'll be able to get my Undeaded Samurai card down soon, which is pretty cool. So, we're going to swing with you. Yeah, that was a bit dumb. I was supposed to play my Terramorphic Expanse there and play my Devoted Retailer anyway, and I did that totally wrong. Should have just played my Moth Rider there. I wasn't thinking at all. Story of my life. So here we go. Fleshbag Marauder. So when it enters the battlefield, I have to sacrifice creatures. So does he. So basically, I have to sacrifice one of my creatures. Okay, that's fairly obvious. I just choose one of my creatures. Although he does now get one crest, one token down on that. So that's probably within his interest. Two. So is it whenever... Whenever a creature dies, so that includes my creatures as well. That's pretty awesome play, actually. That's pretty good. Uh, we shall play the Terramok Expanse. Uh, we shall pop you for a red land, as he already knows what deck I've got. So, find me a red land. There we go. Mountain. We'll play the Araba Moth Rider as well. This is going to be useful for taking out that 5-5. Five five. Fingers crossed. Should be able to get my Kitsune Blade Master down next turn, which will be nice. So we can swing him for another one point of damage with my Devoted Retainer. Get him down to 16. There we go. And then we've also got a 1-1 one, one, uh, guaranteed hit at the moment, providing he doesn't get something flying. So my Kitsune Blade Master will be good for taking out his 5-5, um, five, five, because it'll have first strike, and then I can always pump it up using my Brute Force as well, which would be good. Another land, that's what I'd like to see. So I've either got Indebted Samurai or Kitsune Blade Master this turn, so I'll probably go for the Kitsune Blade Master, as it is uh, slightly more useful straight away. The uh, Indebted Samurai will be good the turn... Oh, what's he got? Ooh, can always give things double strike as well. That's pretty awesome. And then we also play the Kitsune Blade Master. Excelente. Like so. Hit continue. It's the, end of my, it's the end of my turn. What's he playing? Vampiric Tutor. Search your library for a card. Shuffle your library. Ah, so he's looking for a card. I don't know which card he wants, but uh, he, does he does lose even more life, which is pretty crazy. What's he playing then? Mutate. All creatures gain minus one. For each swamp in play, what? That is cra that was crazy. So he gets to play his five five now. Oh my god! At least I can still defend against his grave lord with my indebted samurai, which is always good. So we'll play you. He doesn't have anything to remove it, so uh, we'll just hit continue. So we'll be able to defend against that because that will come on as a three four, and then I can also give it plus three plus three as well, which is awesome. So he's going to do, so he's going to pop that now, bring on his 5-5, five five, which will come on with summoning sickness, except now it doesn't, but I do have my brute force to defend it with, which is sweet, undead warchief, still not going to matter, matey, let me guess he's going to swing in, so I will block with this one, 
block, pause, play brute force. Sucks to be you. Ah, uh, well, it kills off my creature as well. Not the end of the world. At least I get rid of his decent one. There we go. So he, can't, he kind of tried to activate his own ability there. I've got lots of land here and then no creatures. That really powerful, like, swampy thing was really annoying. He's now got a 3-2 that he can swing at me with. Here's hoping I draw something decent next turn. I thought I had enough there to defend with. Damn. That was kind of annoying. Hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was frustrating. Oh, then I... Summon a no a quick creature gets plus two zero and has first strike. Uh, may as well play it, get it on the battlefield. Hopefully something um, decent will come up next turn. I'm just top decking it here, and he's got loads of land and cards in his hand and stuff like that. So uh, I'm kind of scared that he's going to have something decent. This zombie under war chief's pretty good as well. So he's going to swing in for another three, bring me down to fourteen. There we go. And what's he going to play? Grave Titan. Oh God's sake. So I've probably lost this match as well. This is kind of frustrating, the fact of how unlucky I've been. Another brute force. That's not really that useful, I'll be honest. I've got lots of creatures in this deck, and I don't seem to be drawing any of them. Yeah, that's me dead. Sorry, guys. No in, no in this uh, particular series. Very frustrating. Oh, God. Wow, these all got out of hand very quickly. Okay, so that... Clearly wasn't my best series. All, all of those opponents I faced had some kind of mental strategies that all seemed to make it so that they had crazy creatures very easily, and I just didn't seem to get that. None of my equipment came out, none of my creatures, none of my good creatures seemed to come out when I wanted them, which is always very frustrating. But hey ho, that's the end of that series. Um, I've, I think I've almost finished running through all the decks now. I've only got a couple more to go before I start again and go back to some of my more favourite decks, which is always nice. So yeah, uh, I'm going to leave the video there. Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, it's nice seeing you uh, comment on my videos. Let me know what I'm doing well and what I'm not doing well. If you enjoyed the if you enjoyed the video, it's always nice to see you like and favourite. To uh, let me know if you're enjoying my incompetence at uh, Magic 2014. I really need to get more practice in. I'm, I'm not more cards, but uh, I just don't seem to have the time at the moment. I promise I will do. I will, I will get more practice in soon and get more playtime in. Uh, if you're new to the channel, it's always nice to see you subscribe. And again, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.